Landed in Asia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia Mike in the house. Just gonna go get our baggage now. Uh, about an hour drive to the hotel. So yeah, it should be a nice little trip. We'll see Malaysia for what it actually is. Fur going on the road. Yeah, see the countryside, see the city, how people drive. Like Manila. King Kong Bundy, look. Blue Bugatti rims, thinks he runs the road. Look at this. All of his rims. One of those. Hopefully this one's a bit safer. It's gonna arrive about 6 p.m. I reckon. Yeah, we'll get organized, calibrated. Hopefully we'll get some evening shenanigans in the book. But yeah. We'll see what's what's in the line. I'm feeling the vibes of this place, J Hubs. Clean, very modern, very fresh. Got a futuristic vibe. We haven't even left the airport, have we? This airport is quite nice. Yeah, so we're gonna pick up our bubble teas and then head on over our drive to the hotels. And we're staying quite close to the Petronas Towers, which will be a, a nice view, good settings. Oh, we only do the best thing, we're not gonna we're not gonna stay in a dungeon, are we? We're not gonna stay in a bloody dormitory. So yeah, only the best we'll do. Yeah, that's the plan. I think officially now I could be called the bubble tea king of both Asia and Europe. We're conquering the world, one bubble tea at a time. And yes, we've got them all. It's like the seven dragon balls right in front of us. We're gonna call Shenron tomorrow and grant some wishes. So we're just out on an evening stroll out in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. Very nice, very chill weather, nothing too uh, humid. Yeah, a lot of traffic. Lovely patrol towers. Got a bit hit by a bike. Yeah, it's a really cool evening actually. Quite like this place. It's more modern than the Philippines. Really cool with some nice cars here, seeing a few Porsches and stuff already. So yeah, very different. Really enjoying the vibes compared to other Asian places I've been to. Yeah, we'll see what's what over the coming days.
it's all right, it's not the best. It might be a bit of a ball bag shrivel, but that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Let's see. Oh, that's definitely cold. Yeah, this could take a while. That's a good view, mind you. Uh, I can't take it. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're going, we're going to ball bag. Ah! Nasty. And it's very cold. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's quite nice. It's refreshing. I don't like it, mate. It's don't, I don't like it, okay? It's refreshing. All right. Do you hear me? All right. All right, sunshine. All right, go. All right, mate. Whoa, together we made it. Do you know what that means? Your baits! <laughs> so, how do you prevent burnout? Uh, good question. I've got a bit of a controversial opinion on this one. I'm quite strong in my stance, and that's that if you're not a motorbike, if you're not a car, you don't run on an, as an engine. So, for me, I don't really believe in burnout. What I believe in any times where I've maybe felt like burnout is happening to me is that something's not quite right in my life. Let's say, for example, in a professional setting, you're feeling burnout, you think, hang on, you know, I'm not really enjoying work so much. I don't feel so motivated. Well, a big reason for me is that that role or that thing you're doing isn't so aligned with your goals anymore. And it doesn't align with your spirit in terms of who you want to be or what you want to achieve and things like that, right? So, but you're still doing it and you're just kind of beating a dead horse at that point and it's not really what you need or want to do. Okay, so we're done with the pool, we're done with gym, we're done with uh, shooting some content, which will be published very soon for everyone to see. And uh, now it's time for some delicious, fantastic lunch.